Hey, what's up, guys? Little man with a big opinion here. So, I'm on Reddit more and more these days. Um, you know, when I watch YouTube videos, it's me watching the, the probe revenge, the nuclear revenge, and, you know, the I don't work here ladies, and they're pretty funny. Um, but I've started using Reddit as a, uh, you know, a prepping platform as well, as of recently. And today's question that I'm going to talk about on here um, was the number one trending uh, in one of the prepping uh, reddits that I'm on and the title was Gray Man Gardening um, had no clue what that meant at all but essentially he said you know I live in a midwestern town and uh, I have a garden but I want to add a greenhouse uh, but how do I continue to look like a gray man you know in my you know my suburb suburban area uh, because I think a greenhouse will stick out like a sore thumb uh, and a lot of the comments were you know have a bug out location or you know get out of the city, you know, if you're a prepper and you're living in the city, then are you really a prepper kind of thing, uh, and so that's what I'm going to talk about today, uh, so first of all, him trying to be a gray man in the suburbs, uh, for you to blend in with the people around you, the first thing I would suggest is, um, you know, have neighbors that you're on very good speaking terms with, and they might know that you have a garden, um, but I think it's better that before, you know, SHTF happens, if you're, you know, very friendly and, you know, like I said, on good speaking terms with them, you know, maybe they won't look at you as someone that, um, could help their survival uh, or kind of be in their way and they won't try to take it from you um, they'll look at you as more like a teacher and say well he's got a garden uh, show me show me the gardening skill now that being said before anything happens you know you live in a suburban area um, most people have the same size backyard you know throughout the whole thing um, and you'd be surprised at how much you can get away with planting in that small of an area. Uh, so, I would go as far as to extend, you know, a gardening lesson. You know, tell them, hey, you know, times are kind of hard. I know a thing about gardening. If you want to come over and help me out, I can show you, you know, what you should be doing uh, with my garden. And then I can, you know, tell you about the different supplies you need. Um, and as long as you don't live in Michigan, you know, you can go to Walmart, spend ten dollars, and get five different types of plants, um, and you can plant your own garden. Uh, if everyone in your area has a garden, then um, you're blending in with them. You're back to your gray man mentality. Um, but the likelihood of them wanting to take what you have is lower because they're tending to their own garden, you're tending to your own garden. Um, it's not as tempting. Um, whereas if they had no garden and you had a garden, then they'd be like, look, he's got food, he's got, you know, he's producing food, we want it. Um, you know, their mind would be on making sure their crops grow. Uh, now they could be, you know, eyeing you and seeing how, how your stuff's producing and waiting for the opportune moment, but, you know, you, you can't predict everything and protect everything, but I think, you know, have, giving them the ability and the knowledge to be able to do it as well, you know, they would be focused on the fruits of their labors and not trying to take yours. Um, and if you both have gardens, 
um, then maybe y'all are planting different types of things. Maybe you have, you know, carrots and potatoes and uh, stuff like that, and they might be growing onions and radishes and herbs and, you know, someone might plant a fruit tree, um, and then you're kind of getting the, the setup for a mag going, you know, you got your mutual assistant group, and it's like, well, I grow X amount of potatoes, but I don't eat that many potatoes, so-and-so's got an orange tree, and I know they don't eat all those oranges, uh, so I'll swap you a bag of potatoes for a bag of oranges, kind of thing. Uh, and then he said that he wants to add a greenhouse. Uh, so I think that would make you stick out a lot more than uh, just a garden. Because uh, I think that's, you know, next level gardening. You know, setting yourself up to be able to do it year round. Um, in a suburban area, I, I don't know how you could... Um, you know, tactically hide that and continue to be a gray man. The only thing I can think of is, uh, and the only reason why I know this is because my parents did the same thing. Uh, my dad put up a 10 foot, you know, pine wood privacy fence all around his property. Uh, and he, I mean, he does live in a town of, uh, 1100 people. Uh, so at least in that town wise, everyone's like, Hmm. That's interesting. Big fence. I wonder what he's hiding behind it. Uh, but now they're just curious slash they know something's back there or they, th they think something's back there. My dad's put up this fence and he's talked about, you know, wanting to put a concrete pad in the back and making like a two, uh, two car shop back there for five or six years. Has that happened? No. Uh, the fence was put up and, you know, it looks good. But if someone were to go back there, I mean, they would find, you know, a Catahoula, actually two Catahoulas now, um, and a couple of crops. But there's, you know, he's not hiding anything overly expensive back there like a two-car shop or, you know, a full functioning greenhouse in this guy's situation. Uh, so, you know, you have cover and concealment. They think something could be back there, but they don't know. Uh, and as long as your HOA doesn't care if you're in that situation, uh, then you could potentially hide what you're doing in your backyard. Uh, but then again, those fences are kind of expensive, uh, especially if you're not doing it yourself. Um, and since you already have the garden uh, and you know you're taking down your old your normal six foot fence uh, then the neighbors on either side or the neighbors on the back side or whatever they could look in and they know exactly what you have and if they're talkers then the 10 foot fence is kind of useless because it's it's hiding your stuff uh but once it's built, you know, throw whatever you want back there. It could be a pool. It could be just, you know, a barbecuing pad. It could be, uh, you know, you have one little shed and underground you've got three Connex boxes. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I, I would say uh, in, in your situation, I guess my final point is you know people do notice these kind of things um you're taking the time to try to make yourself more self-reliant uh, and self-sufficient um, so the more things you have the more things others might want so you know after you've exhausted all the options of trying to hide it with a fence you know building that relationship with your neighbors you know I think any good amount of a relationship is better than no relationship with them at all uh, then the last step is 
you know, being committed to protecting and defending what's yours. Um, I, I don't know how many states have castle laws. I don't know how many states have stand your ground laws. Uh, he also didn't say, what, you know, he didn't even give out the information of what state he's in, let alone, you know, you, your county could have something, your city could have something. But at least where I'm at, any and all of your property, um, if it's being stolen, you can protect it. Uh, you know, the, the weirdest thing that I've seen with these Texas gun laws, um, and in this situation it sucked, was uh, the law says if you think someone else is trying to harm someone else, uh, then, you know, you have the ability, the right to then protect someone else as well. Uh, it's getting off on a little tangent. Basically, one guy tried to mug someone else. Um, and the someone else was fairly capable in, like, uh, Krav Maga, uh, and, like, Taekwondo. And he started kicking the guy's butt. Well, someone else had a firearm and he showed up. And you know, he, the only thing he saw was the mugger uh, becoming the victim. And so in his situation, he sees this guy getting the crap beat out of him. Uh, and he shot the other guy. Uh, now... There was security cameras. Uh, you know, he didn't kill the other dude. Uh, so the mugger got in trouble because, you know, he was trying to mug someone. Uh, but from what I was reading, it was a fairly long court battle. And they finally said, you know, based off of the footage and the guy's testimony, uh, you know, he thought he was trying to save someone. So protect your stuff. You know, I don't, it's, it's going past the point of, you know, you need food, water, and shelter, um, to sustain life. You also need protection. Uh, so if your neighbors know you have a greenhouse, um, then they can probably guess that you, um, have the knowledge and, uh, the, you know, thoughtfulness to produce food. So, if you can produce food, then, and you've got the money to make a, make a greenhouse, and you've already got a garden, then you should have the money to procure a firearm or two, or a crossbow, or a bow, or a sword, or a spear, something, um, to then protect what is yours. 13 minutes later, I didn't think I can talk this long about one Reddit post, but I don't have anything else to say for it. Um, in the comment section down below, um, say what you would do. Um, you know, it could just be, yeah, I agree with what you said, or it could be, I think you're stupid and everything you said is wrong. Uh, either way, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. Like the video if you found any of the information useful, and share, share it with all your friends and do all that cool stuff if they're interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, I'll catch you next time, guys. Peace.